Thank you. Good evening. Richard talked about trust. The gentleman here just talked about trust. I would like to talk to you as one who has fought for and looked for trust. And the trust in the time of authoritarianism is on the rise, like freedom of speech lies within us. And I believe as journalists, in your search for that, you will find, as I have found, what I'm looking for, all of us. That photo makes me change the whole speech. Um, after 9-11, CBS News hired me based upon my experience working for the New York Times in Afghanistan in the 1980s. And when I arrived in Kabul after not having been there in many years, I noticed it looked like photographs of cities I had seen and photographs of cities I'd seen during World War II. I talked to a woman who runs CARE, the largest, oldest um, charity, NGO in America. And we talked about girls' education. She said more girls went to school under the time of the Taliban than ever before. I went back to CBS and ABC and NBC, the television radio world that I worked in. And I talked to them and no one believed me and no one wanted a part of it. I went to the Swedish committee, the venerable Swedish committee, the, the director, and I asked who was there during the time of the Taliban, and I asked him, what about girls going to school? He said, more girls went to school in rural Afghanistan under the Taliban than in the history of Afghanistan, and we have all the data to prove it. The man you saw at the very beginning had his, an Afghan in the Kandahari Desert when I was escaping the Russians, uh, working my way south in 1981, had his hand around his daughter, not his son. I'm the man on the far right there preparing to take a camel with a rifle in my saddle to work our way away from the Russians and all the way across what's called the Red Desert into Afghanistan. Before that, excuse me, into Pakistan. Before that, I had, a, I had grown up as a young man in the American West. My father had two horses. I learned how to ride as a boy. When I was 12, I found myself on the floor in the public library reading a book about Lawrence of Arabia. As I got older, I became interested to various means in Afghanistan. In 1979, when the Russians invaded, I said, I must go. I went to the, I called every single, I was working in Washington, D.C. at the time, and I called every single, and that is with me and my, and my, and my interpreter, with a man named Jalal Adin Haqqani. And I will come, I will talk about, more, about him more in a second, and that is, somewhat reminiscent of my experience 10 years later, 15 years later, that's, that's a spy we found. Uh, the men I was with found in this man, <laughs> the man on the right I owe my life to. This is Jalal Adin Akani on, our, on a, hello, <coughs> excuse me, on a captured um, uh, M124 Soviet tank in, in the 1980s. But what I was trying to say is that I, in 1979, when the Russians invaded, I vowed that I would go to Afghanistan. I called. And I was working in Washington, and I called every single editor that had, of every newspaper that had an office in, in Washington. I finally ended up calling the New York Times 11 times in New York. On the 12th time, they took my call. I went up to see them. And I had never worked in journalism that before. I had worked in sports journalism a little bit, but never anything close to this. We had talks for two days. And that's before a very, very serious battle in Kandahar. Um, the, the Times men said to me, how do we know that we can trust you? And I'd gone to school, graduate school in France, and I said, well, Camus, who played soccer as a boy, said all he learned from ethics, he learned from sports. And based upon that, they trusted me. They gave me a, a check for $500 and said, you can have the best time of your life in New York tonight, or you can apply it to a plane ticket to Pakistan. And then they also gave me a letter of introduction. I flew to Pakistan, made my way up into the mountains with a relay of guards to live with a man called Jalal Adin Haqqani, his younger brother, Ibrahim. Here they're preparing, a, they slaughtered a, a sheep for me in, in honor of my, of my coming as a, as a guest. 
I lived with a man named Jalal Adina Khani, his 19-year-old brother, Ibrahim, 16 tribesmen, part of our proxy army during the Cold War against the Soviet Union. Uh, they called themselves the Akani Mujahideen. Five years later, half of them were dead. Today we call them, we, the United States and its allies, NATO countries, the Akani Network, in my view, the most powerful jihadist group in the world. Um, this is in Haqqani territory in eastern Afghanistan as we're working our way, as I'm working my, my way with a guard, is my, one of my bodyguards, or my only bodyguard there, a rifleman, is on, is, is, is on my right. Um, in 2000, 2007, after um, CBS hired me and went back, I got a phone call, or an email rather, from the editor of Times Books. And he said, you lived with Jalal al-Din Akani and those, all those Mujahideen during the 1980s. The CIA does not know where bin Laden is. Can you go back into the tribal areas where you were in the 1980s? And he and I had talked about this a little bit, and I said, absolutely. And that led me up into the mountains of Af of along the Afghan-Pakistani border, went with the Taliban three times. They always kept their word. The fourth time, they didn't. And I became the first American kidnapped by the Taliban. And what I learned in that, in that room was the romance of Lawrence of Arabia when I was 12, when I first read that about him, and growing up with a Marine Corps father who fought the Japanese in World War II and wanted me to go to West Point, and I didn't want to go to Vietnam. Um, but I certainly could not be a coward in front of my father. I was in the Army, based in Germany, and felt guilty because I was never one. I did not go like 97% of the men in my unit to Vietnam. I always felt guilty, not that I wanted to kill people, but that I wanted to be a soldier. And it was in that, it's in that prison cell that I found the war that I was looking for and the courage that I needed to survive it, which is why I wanted to talk to you just very briefly about the importance as we all belong, and I was, I was in, a, uh, in a, uh, I had a National Geographic assignment in the Amazon, and we were going upriver on a tributary, and we stopped in a Catholic mission, and, the, and I asked the priest, I said, what is the name of the tribe here? And he gave me the name, and he turned to me, and he said, you too belong to a tribe, the tribe of journalists. I never thought of that before. But I found that to go my own way, I, to go against, I had to go against my tribe. And what I mean is that I realized after I, in, when I went with it, um, talked to the, the Swedish committee chair and I talked to the head of care that CBS, if you see everybody else, disagreed with my whole notion that the that girls' education was better under the Taliban than before. And today, Sirajuddin Haqqani son of Jalal al-Din, military commander of the Taliban, arguably the most powerful, who the Saudis invited down with his younger brother to Saudi Arabia very quietly two weeks ago, was without a doubt, in my view, if there is going to be an heir to bin Laden, it's going to be somebody like Siraj al-Din. And if you noticed in the uh, interview that he gave to, Charlene, uh, to Christiane Amanpour, that she very astutely talked about all the women who worked in the interior ministry in Afghanistan. So the thing that I failed to do all those years and that bothered me was that I did not have the courage, even though I had developed some, what I like to think is physical courage, I did not have the courage that comes from within to go against my own tribe. So what I still have yet to do is write that story about girls' education in Afghanistan. And I pass on to you that everything I've learned is, something, is why I'm here tonight to tell you that what I have found lies within me. I know all of you on your similar journeys, because each one of you is a journalist, always look, you're looking for something, you will find it. Just trust yourself, which we've talked about trust. Don't give in. 
and you will find it. Thank you.